one of the best things about living in Arizona is how rich we are in military history. The veteran community is huge, especially in aviation. Now I am at the Arizona Commemorative Air Force Museum and I am with Ed Campbell. You run this place. Well, I try to run the place with a, with a very good staff of, uh, of people helping me do that. Well, let's start with the staff, because sure. when I, you say staff, most of the people that here are here are volunteers. They are. About 99% of our staff here are volunteers. We actually have a, a staff that is uh, the management, if you will, the overall management uh, structure, that, that, you know, air base leader, uh, executive officer, and so on. We do the managerial portions of this. The volunteers put in their time, restoration of aircraft, exhibits on the museum floor and so on, procurement of aircraft as well. So 99% of the people in this uh, air base, and there's about 500 people, 99% uh, are the volunteers and we do have paid staff though, paid uh, employees. It's interesting to walk around and see the people that are just blown away. You can tell some people like myself who don't know a lot about military aircraft and others that absolutely do and it brings back so many memories when they walk up to one of these airplanes. Yeah, in fact, when we go out on summer tour every year, we get a large audience of folks that were either in the military back in World War II, they have family members that were in the military in World War II, there is some sort of connection. They come into a museum like this, they see some of the aircraft that were flown back then, and then some of the aircraft that were flown later in other wars like Korean War and Vietnam and so on, we have some of those aircraft as well. That connection becomes more abundantly clear that there is something there they want to talk about or they want to relive. A lot of folks who came back from World War II never say a thing to their families at all. Their families don't know what they did. They see these aircraft, the, the former member, and they start talking. And it comes out and they'll look at us and they'll say something, he's never said that before. Yeah, so. it, it, what about the one aircraft here, the iconic piece that you have in this museum, what is it? The one iconic piece that keeps us going is the B-17 bomber. It was iconic, number one for us, but it's also, uh, also iconic, World War II, uh, uh, the air bases in England and Europe and so on stationed the B-17 bomber, did a lot of strategic bombing against Germany and so on. Uh, we have one of those out of about 12,000 that were built in the World War II era. We have about 10 in the entire world that are flying. We have one of those examples here. It's uh, being ready to go out on summer tour this year along with our B-25 bomber that is out on the ramp right now. Can we go see it? Yes, sir. Let's go take a look. So this is where they prep the aircraft for that summer tour you were talking about. This is our maintenance facility where all the work is done on all the aircraft, but primarily the ones going out on tour. So this is the one, this is the airplane that everybody wants to see. That's the one, that's the iconic plane from World War II and that's our icon in this facility. So talk, when you, when you prep an airplane like this to go on tour, and there's only eight of them flying in the world or nine of them flying in the world, it's got to take a lot of time to keep these planes in the air. It takes a tremendous amount of time. We have to have people who understand the works and the mechanics of the aircraft, the FAA uh, airworthiness directives, all the uh, documentation that has to take place on a regular airliner. It takes place on these aircraft too. They have to be airworthy, they have to be FAA certified, so we do all of that work in-house. Does it ever just become old hat to you? Because I, it's like when you see an airplane like this, it's, it blows you away what a big piece of equipment that is and then to just see all the detail on that airplane. It never becomes old hat. Uh, when This was my favorite aircraft as a child. Uh, I used to watch a movie called uh, 12 O'Clock High, it was a TV show, the same thing, using this aircraft. So working around this plane seemingly is becoming old hat to some folks. They enjoy working on the plane. They enjoy the fact that there aren't that many of them around and keeping this thing in the air is something they really relish. Your mission is education, so what would you say to the people here in Arizona that know Falcon Field exists but may have never been out here to the museum? Uh, understand why the airplane is here to begin with, what the air crews and the airframes did in World War II, and why we're here in the first place, which is to not only educate about World War II, but to commemorate those contributions by those air crews. You know, there's a reason why they call the World War II generation our greatest generation. And this is just one little piece of that history of why that entire generation had to rally to that cause. And this is one of the things that reminds people of what it took to make it happen. That's right. These aircraft were produced a lot of times using automobile manufacturers. There's Studebaker engines, some of these planes. Wow. So uh, the war effort took a lot of uh, uh, effort by people, not only at the war front, but at home as well. And these aircraft were built to get them into the air and start making a push against the, uh, the Axis uh, to get them out of uh, the European theaters and so on. So that's what the whole thing was built for, to kind of alleviate Europe and the rest of the world from tyranny for just a small amount of time, if nothing else. So these airplanes represent that removal of that tyranny. 
If you live in Arizona, there is absolutely no excuse why you don't ever come down here to the Arizona Commemorative Air Force Museum. Naval aircraft, Air Force aircraft, and so much history. Bring your family and spend the day. Ed, thank you so much for doing this. Mike, it's my pleasure. Thanks very much for coming. We'll be back.